I don't know which was more fun, watching Mike Malone look like he was ready to go do a rap battle or listening to them talk about that Mike Malone is the Lakers' daddy. The Lakers beat the Nuggets in five on the way to a title in 2020. The Nuggets beat the Lakers in four on the way to a title in 2023. After Denver won the chip, a Nuggets analyst would label Mike Malone as the Lakers' daddy, and Malone joked about LeBron's retirement. Responding to their name being brought up by the team that swept them, the Laker front office went on to have the best offseason of any NBA team, and by the looks of it, their main core of talent seem extra motivated. It was just a lot of the talking and all the Lakers. That, like, it was just so much of that going on. Like, all right, we get it, y'all won. You know, me and Brian had some conversations like, we can't wait. This heated LA-Denver rivalry is must-see TV, as Hoop fans are getting a playoff-caliber showdown on opening night, and a back and forth worth paying attention to for the long haul. Stay tuned to see how Mike Malone just clapped back at LA, and for a lot more that you can't miss. Right quick, just 17.5% of this channel's audience is subscribed, so splash the sub box and like button from deep, and turn on notifications. After the Nuggets chip, it's more than safe to say they basked in the glory of their number one finish. Maybe it was the altitude, but was this ever a drunk fest <laughs> as they celebrated the first championship <laughs> in franchise history and good for them? He came into this world as the son of a coach, but in these playoffs, he became the Lakers' daddy! <laughs> Four-time NBA Finals MVP and NBA All-Time leading scorer LeBron James hinted at retirement after his 20th season, stirring up some drama after his team was eliminated, which for whatever reason, the Nuggets took personally. Denver's fan base and personnel felt like LeBron hinting at retirement took the narrative away from their advancement into the NBA Finals. To get back at LeBron for that, Malone would go on the Pat McAfee show. Well, a really good question. And speaking of the Lakers, I just want you guys to know this is breaking, breaking news. news I'm thinking about retiring. So don't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah. You love yes. the house coach. You love yes. it. In addition to the Anthony Davis clip from the intro, Hillbilly Kobe Austin Reeves would have this to say about the chirping from Malone and company. I think everybody knows it was pointed at us. They can do it indirectly if they want, but I think it was very obvious to the public eye. That's why everybody was talking about it. LeBron, meanwhile, wouldn't have anything to say on day one, but would throw shade at Malone on his Instagram story back in June, captioning, I hear I'm on your mind that much, huh? I mean, I guess I see why. Enjoy your light, but just know, I'm the sun. Meanwhile, Coach Darvin Ham would speak on the ongoing rivalry by saying on the This League Uncut podcast the following month, This shit ain't over. But the most recent headline comes from the Nuggets' flamethrowing man in charge, Mike Malone, who was asked about the Lakers clapping back to he and his media's comments post-championship. Malone would say, Oh, they're talking about us? That was what, like four months ago? If they're still worried about us, that's on them. Malone's controlling of the narrative was very obvious in last year's postseason, as whether it was the put that near pipe and smoke it quote, or his dismissal of LeBron and the Lakers, he did a thrilling job at simultaneously endorsing and defending his players and coaching staff. That controlling of the narrative continued just yesterday when he tried to downplay this rivalry despite all the trash talk. Malone would continue by saying, that's not a rivalry. I mean, you can't play a team in the conference finals twice in the last couple years and think it's a rivalry. When I think of rivalry, I think of Boston, LA. I think of the New York Knicks and the Miami Heat back in the day, but I don't welcome it or not welcome it with the Lakers. I'm on 2023-24. I'm not living four months ago. Whatever Malone says, you can't deny the two top dogs in the West will mark their calendars for when they see each other in 23-24, including opening night. In terms of 2023, both teams reached the West Finals at utterly different trajectories. Denver with a one seed and expected upon two series wins, and LA with a seven-seeded play-in tournament appearance and two series upsets. And while Denver swept LA, even Malone mentioned that every game was back and forth, and you can't just not take into account the Lakers' gentlemen swept the Nuggets with LeBron and Davis in 2020. I know people discount the bubble, but everyone had a level playing field in it, 
and LA got the best of Denver, with each team's top two players being identical to 2023. So Denver can't get too comfortable, whether it's when they play LA on opening night or down the line in the postseason again in 2024. While Nugget fans will claim this isn't a rivalry like their coach did, Laker fans can claim the same from a historical standpoint. All time in the playoffs, LA swept Denver in both 1987 behind Magic and Kareem and in 2008 behind Kobe and Powell. Denver's lost seven playoff series to Los Angeles in total, with 2023 being their lone win in the franchise matchup. Therefore, it was strange to hear a primary media member of theirs state their head coach was the Lakers' daddy. At that same parade, Mike Malone would guarantee that Bruce Brown would re-sign. Is Brucey B going anywhere? Hell no. Hell no. Only for Bruce to move on to Indiana, securing a two-year $45 million bag with the Pacers. Don't forget, the Nuggets also lost Jeff Green to Houston, Thomas Bryant to Miami, and Jack White to OKC. They would attempt to make up for that by drafting Julian Strother and Hunter Tyson, great draft picks as I've mentioned in the past. They re-signed Reggie Jackson and picked up sharpshooter Justin Holiday in free agency. It was a bit of a rough offseason for Denver, but they can rely on the progression of Christian Brown and Peyton Watson as sophomores. Plus, the entirety of their primary main core is still intact. Nevertheless, the loss of Bruce Brown being one of Denver's biggest off-season storylines means it was a subpar off-season from GM Calvin Booth. Conversely, it was an A-plus off-season for GM Rob Palinka of the Lakers. LA took Jalen Hood Shafino with pick number 17, who could be a steal, re-signed Rui, Austin, and D'Lo, extended Anthony and Jared, and picked up former Miami Heat sniper Gabe Vincent to go along with Torian Prince, Jackson Hayes, Christian Wood, and Cam Reddish. While Brown and Watson's development is something to watch for Denver, Max Christie for LA may have the scariest potential of any young player on either the Lakers or Nuggets. As coach Darvin Ham for LA said, this sh ain't over, and the Lakers' offseason moves and seemingly extra motivated mindset entail they're ready to reach another level in 2024. And to deal with the powerhouse Nuggets, led by two-headed monster Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray, reaching said level will be a necessity. In terms of what's the most intriguing part of this rivalry, I want to know your take. Is this even a rivalry? Let me know down below in the comments section. This was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.